Hello and welcome to another episode of the Whiskey Snob. I'm Tolga. That was uh, Jason <laughs> walking in the background, and this is Chris Chambers. And uh, this is another episode of the Whiskey Snob. We're hosting, being hosted again at Park Barnsport um, in Dubai. We are rummaging around their bottle stores, that's for sure. Uh, we're just mixing it up a little bit today. We're not doing a single malt or a blended malt or a blended whiskey. We are doing a rye. Uh, first time for the whiskey snob, although um, you have read multiple uh, blogs uh, that I've written um, on bourbons, this will be the first video uh, of, uh, of a non-scotch or whiskey single malt, blended malt product. Um, I am going to jump straight in, Chris. Thank you again so much for, for joining me. No problem at all. It might be a good time to say that we've actually been, uh, you know, because we have to batch record a few of these. So this is our fourth or fifth whiskey. Uh, yeah. So. So uh, please forgive, uh, please forgive us and our uh, our humour as we um, as we go through these videos because. Uh, We'd also like to apologise if we spoiled the movie magic for you there, so that uh, continuity fans will probably notice the similarity of outfits and camera angles. So, yes. Uh, they probably have pieced this together already. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, you guys know too. But um, obviously we have to do it as we have time constraints and there's lots of other stuff that we get on and do. So even though we would definitely like to be able to meet on a daily basis uh, to enjoy a quick dram and then bugger off, uh, we have to do a day job from time to time. Correct. And yeah. luckily this sort of permits us to be able to, to jump in and do this. So, um, it's very interesting. I mean, rye, we were just talking about this off camera. Rye has been, the word rye whiskey has been used a little bit to sort of uh, define Canadian whiskies. Yeah. And rye whiskey has really made a, a huge comeback over the past two, three years. <laughs> in the international market. And I think a lot of that um, has uh, this brand in particular to mm -hmm. thank for that. Between, in my opinion, between Bullet and between Rittenhouse, mm -hmm. um, rye whiskeys have really, really come to the forefront. There's been a lot of push, a lot of marketing spend, and maybe a lot of training that's been involved. I mean, like, you tell me how. Well, I mean, going to about the early 2000s when all of a sudden, um, found a lot of uh, sort of big name high quality bartenders who were you know, going back to a lot of the classics and kind of taking a lot of brown spirits especially and kind of putting them back to the fore and kind of trying to reclaim the dominance they once held over sort of a lot of uh, especially vodka cocktails um, and so that had a push for a lot of uh, older ingredients as well things that have pretty much uh, fallen out of favor um, especially sort of in a lot of different bars and rye whiskey was sort of a fantastic example of one of these um, what are these spirits that um, you could forgive quite a few bartenders going back to like, the 20th century who might not even know what rye whiskey was? You know, they thought that American whiskey starts and finished with um, Jim Beaver Jack Daniels. Um, but um, kind of spearheaded by um, sort of the growing amount of bartenders who are really kind of interested, like I said, in going back to the classics and wanting some high quality ingredients to recreate those classics um, in the modern day. Um, it's given rise to a lot of uh, good quality rye whiskies, and uh, which is absolutely fantastic. A lot of my favourite cocktails are some of the American classics, like the you know, Old Fashioned and uh, Sazerac in particular, where uh, where rye is sort of such an important ingredient. Of course. And um, but we had a rye in the United States was kind of around. Uh, people like um, Jim Beam or sort of Pike still always had their ryes, but um, um, Rittenhouse had a lot big part to play, and then Bullet's kind of taken it to the next level, if you like. Um, so Bullet is a relatively newer kid on the block, if you like. Um, it's owned by Diageo, is that right? Uh, yes, yeah, sort of all distributed by Diageo, but um, the story goes, sort of, uh, Tom Bullet, um, I can never remember if it was investment banking or uh, the legal field that he worked in, but uh, the story goes, his great-grandfather, um, Augustus Bullet, um, was um, a salesman, one of the things that he sold was um, a particular bourbon that he named after himself, which is where we get the bullet name from. And uh, so he died, the recipe was um, sort of kind of lost, but um, sort of great grandson found the recipe and decided that he'd rather make whiskey than um, uh, wear a suit to the office, basically. And so they, they resurrected the recipe. Um, 
And it's quite interesting because I mean the bourbon itself has a higher rye content um, in the mash bill than uh, than other bourbons. So um, has as much as Basil Hayden's, or more so even. I couldn't tell you exactly, but um, but certainly, um, I mean, the general rye mix is probably sitting between sort of 15 and 25 percent in most of the bourbons that you have there. Um, so for bullet, it's a, not a hugely dramatic amount, but if you look at just the raw numbers, but in the same way, sort of five different PPM in a whiskey can really dramatically affect the flavour. Right. That extra little bit of rye in the bourbon can really have a big impact, and so. Um, for a straight sort of bourbon and coke mix, I much prefer a bullet because you get that extra kind of lovely kind of orangey kind of um, um, nice kind of tangy snap to it mm. that um, sort of some of the more conventional bourbons just don't really have. I have to admit that I'm, I do prefer a bourbon with a higher rye content just for the sake of um, it doesn't it doesn't well, it's not as sweet first because yeah. obviously the the less corn they're using in the mash um, means that it's going to be less sweet. Mm. So, and I, I really enjoyed having a, a, either a rye or a high bourbon, a high rye content bourbon for smoky old fashions. Yeah. Um, I find there's a lot of sort of like lemongrass and sort of hay and um, really unique notes within those cocktails that come through from that, from that rye. But, you know, not to take anything away from this, let's get stuck in. Let's see. A lot of kind of uh, like orange peel is what comes to mind. Huge. Right? But, uh, sauna wood. Again, a mm -hmm. fresh, freshly cut grass. Mm -hmm. Think of uh, gambling on a paddle steamer for that. Marshmallows. I mean, the thing with uh, the bullet rye that we have here, and uh, obviously. The rye whiskey gets a higher rye content, but I think it's second only to I think it's old overhaul, which I think is about 100% rye. This is the 95 on the bottle refers to the 95% rye in the mash bill. Um, most uh, other rye whiskies, um, it's sitting more of a between sort of the 55 to kind of 65% mark. So um, I said still follows a rule that still one's just as much of a rye whiskey than the other, but uh, this is you know con continuing um, what they'd already set down with. The bourbon to make this up, and said this is my start and end point for um, for a sazerac. Um, if this is the bar, this is how I, I would always ask for it. It's very nice. I mean, forty five percent alcohol. It smells. It smells like it's slightly stronger. It's there. There is that touch of ethanol on the nose, hmm. especially if you take a, a big, big enough whiff of it. It's really. It's really. Evident, but beautiful citrus in that, really nice. But not just not just your average lemon. It's it's more than that. Mm. It's like quince of pomelo. Okay. Really strange, like obscure citrus fruit that I haven't had for a long, long time. Mm. This uh, incidentally makes it sometimes a bit of a pain to try and blind test this one because it just is not like you would expect if you're relatively unfamiliar with American uh, whiskies. Mm. So. And, the, and actually, when once you taste it, the palate doesn't do you any favors, favors either because it just completely throws you like it throws these big curveballs at you. And you think, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Like, you, can, you can recognize so many of the characteristics within the glass, but you. You can't tie them together unless you've been drinking it, unless you drink it on a regular basis. It's not something that it's not something that sort of uh, will pop up and you says, oh, let's pull it right. Yeah, and um, something that um, I suppose sort of speaks quite highly though is that whenever uh, putting a several whiskies on the table for everyone to enjoy, it's like my friends will of course go for the most expensive ones first because, well, they would. Um, but, um, I always tend to find that if I put a good quality bourbon or a rye, I usually find that's the bottle that's had the most taken out of it. Mm. Because of that extra sweetness, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be one of those things that appeals to such a wider uh, sort of range of people. So it's a little bit like um, putting a bottle of dessert wine just on the table at a dinner party. Again, you'll be surprised at how quickly that will disappear. Whether it's because people are just pouring larger glassfuls at the end of the night, I'm not 100% sure. Um, Would you like some? Yes, please. The drop. It has a very, see, 
palate for me on this, before adding the water, it's very tangy. It's almost chewy, quite sharp, um, candied ginger almost mm. on the back of the palate, on the back of the tongue, on the sides. It's, it doesn't make you wince, but it definitely makes you think. It, I'm not going to say it gave me a headache, but like it made me actually sort of like focus and concentrate on what I was getting out of the glass. And I love that in a whiskey. When it makes you stop for a second and say, hey, hey hello, like, I'm here. And you think, what the fuck is that? Hmm. With the water, opens it up slightly. Still not shy whiskey though, it's still... I mean, that would hold more water than that easily, and um, I'd still be able to give you more, which is actually I'm going to add just a touch sure, of more. And this, again, just another fantastic reason why it's been uh, kind of championed by a lot of bartenders as well, but because of the fact that it holds its shape very well, um, even in the face of a certain amount of dilution, makes it a fantastic yeah. cocktail whiskey. Yeah. Makes, uh, like I said, I mentioned the Saturday, but it makes uh, a wonderful old fashioned as well. Um, I do like this in an old fashioned. Just adding that touch of water, the second touch of water, is really, again, it does hold well, holds true, but it's done something very unique to the nose. Mm. I've started to get a lot of berries, like raspberries, a little bit of strawberry, mm. summer fruits. Quite pungent nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> Grandmother's stale stockings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, I didn't go into the habit of sniffing my grandmother's uh, stale stockings, but uh, everyone's feet to live their life how they choose. Um, I'll just pour myself another glass of this and uh, leave you to it. <laughs> Made my big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and we've all um, come out with tasting notes that we're not necessarily proud of, uh, of, course, of later course. on. But uh, in the meantime, the whiskey is still there, and it's mm. just amazing stuff. But again, you're putting together your ultimate whiskey shelf and you're going to reach for a single ride to go on it. You have to give serious consideration this being the one that goes on. No, I agree. I think, um, I think any bar, any home bar or any personal uh, whiskey selection or whiskey collection would not be complete without at least a bottle of rye or at least a bottle of bullet rye. Um, and that's not me plugging any particular brand, it's just because it is so popular and you can do so much with it. You can throw it into to cocktails, it's just so, um, it's so forgiving, you can mess around with it and it still, because it has, it can keep such integrity in the flavour, um, it really does allow you to mess around with it and if you fuck it up, it's not expensive, throw it away, start again. The price is a great point as well, just of course we have um, things like the TH uh, Handy, sort of uncut rye. Uh, the ones that are sort of very, very well regarded, and uh, certainly a particular edition of TH Handy was one of my, uh, one of the whiskies I very much was sad about when I finished the last drop of that one in the bottle. But, uh, but the fact of the matter is, you know, if you're making all your old-fashioned your cocktails with these very, very expensive whiskies, of course, um, your mileage may vary, but it's not always what you want to be doing. Whereas, um, again, the Bullet Rye um, is certainly a lot more affordable in comparison to that. So. Um, you know, dare I say it, it's fantastic value as well for having such a fantastic whiskey that is not going to leave you deciding between the whiskey or food at the end of the month. Yeah, of course. No, it's, it's, it's definitely something that is, is affordable. Go out and buy a bottle, share it with some friends, and just see what you think. If you don't like it, no harm, no foul. But I'm pretty certain you're going to. I'm pretty certain that even if you don't like it straight, you might like it over some ice, you might like it with a mixer, you might like it in a cocktail. But there's one thing for sure, you will like it in something, because it is so versatile. Um, obviously, we're a little bit pasted by now. <laughs> We've still got another <laughs> few whiskies to go through. Um, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Whiskey Snobs uh, Whiskey Review. I've been joined by Chris Chambers. Thank you again, Chris. No thank you to the Path Bar School. Uh, please check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the Whiskey Snob. 
Um, if you're interested in cigars, please go ahead and check out our other page, which is facebook.com forward slash tailored stash. Um, and um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to these videos and leave any comments below. Thank you again. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye.